for his, quote, coal entrance, unquote, that he apparently wants to keep but has given up on. Uh, saw the design on Belmont Street in Kitchener just now. Four by fours, stout, handy. Um, handy if a baby elephant drops in? That's what I thought. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, I, gave, I, I, I phoned and left Ralph a message telling him uh, where the off white house is, white house is, and said, uh, feel free to just drop by and, you know, uh, as often as you need to, looking at the outside and figuring out what needs to be done. Uh, I wasn't clear about uh, the coal entrance, which is what it would have been uh, back in the 19th century when, when the house was built. Uh, that was where the coal was delivered downstairs uh, next to the furnace. Um, I was going to turn that into a, a separate entrance for going in downstairs. So if Rolly's working at Camp David and he needs to get something downstairs, uh, he doesn't have to knock on the door and I don't have to go downstairs. He can just let himself in. Uh, but I've given up on that. It's like, no, I don't want to just sort of uh, make do steps. And I really don't have the kind of money that you would need to do uh, off White House steps uh, out of stone or whatever. So that's just going to get filled in. Uh, we're going to seal up the entrance uh, completely and just turn it into part of the foundation and then fill in uh, the, uh, the steps going down and just level it off and uh, plant flowers on it or something like that. So if you want to come, uh, Ralph, if, uh, if you want to come by again sometime and look at it from that vantage point and say, okay, what's, what's the easiest, cheapest way to do that? Uh, that's that's what the Dave Sim administration of Art Park Vanaheim is about, is cheap and easy. Um, hopefully, hopefully there's this sudden up, outpouring of, of cerebus mania that takes place after I'm dead, and millions and millions of dollars come in, and then Eddie can do that kind of stuff. He can he can excavate where where the steps were and. Uh, Put in solid gold steps if you want. Uh, I, that will be a second administration kind of thing. Or if Eddie just has to limp by as I did, and then uh, when he kicks the bucket, the third president of Aardvark Manheim experiences um, Eddie mania, or Cerebus mania, or Dave mania, and billions of billions of dollars come in, then uh, the third president will be able to do that. Uh, fortunately, that will be completely off of my plate. <laughs> I am I am very very pleased to say very very pleased to contemplate. Give, contemplate gives me gives me a warm feeling inside. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Tony Dunlop. Boy, I got to tell you, this time around with uh, with the questions, it's like. Uh, I know the answer to that question, and I, I know the uh, you know, the idiosyncratic Dave Sim answer to that question. Boy, there is no easy way to explain this, but uh, if you ask the question, I'll do my best to explain it. Uh, we might we might be breaking up this uh, uh, please hold for Dave Sim into two sessions if you're okay with that because it's already 8.14, and I'm just getting to the Amalekites question <laughs> of Tony Dunlop and going, all right, and we haven't even gotten to the, to a couple of the really elaborate questions that I go, I know what I have to say about this. There's no easy way to say it. So, Tony Dunlop asked, so regarding Damien's link, uh, and you wrote, he's referring to this comic that Damien T. Lloyd posted a link to. Um, uh, don't idolize yourself, don't hurt people. Uh, blot out the memory of all Amalekites 
quote, blot out the memory of the Amalekites, quote, it. and I couldn't help but wonder why, if their memory is to be, quote, blotted out, unquote, are they being written about in Israel's uh, sacred history? Uh, maybe Matt can ask Dave what he has to say about that little paradox in next month. Please hold. And uh, yes, I, uh, but in order to explain uh, the reference to the Amalekites, you have to uh, go back to who the Amalekites are, which goes back to um, Genesis and the split between Esau and Jacob that uh, when Jacob supplanted Esau. Esau was the older brother. Jacob was the younger brother. Uh, ordinarily, the uh, Isaac's birthright, which Isaac got from Abraham, would have gone to Esau as the older brother. But uh, uh, Jacob uh, fooled or uh, tempted Esau into selling Jacob his birthright for uh, a mess of pottage, which is where the expression comes from. Uh, you, you've got a mess of pottage for that. Pottage is stewed vegetables, and uh, it's uh, this was red pottage, um, which resonates with Esau uh, coming out all red and hairy-bodied when he was born. <laughs> this is too many digressions already. Believe me, I'm trying. I'm trying to stay on subject here. Anyway, uh, so Jacob supplanted Esau and took his birthright, and then fooled uh, his father Isaac again and got um, Esau's blessing. So the younger brother ended up getting what the older brother was supposed to be getting, and um, Esau, not taking this very well realized that uh, his parents, and particularly his mother, um, uh, hated the Edomites, uh, E-D-O-M, e uh, which was uh, a pagan civilization uh, adjacent to uh, the, uh, the Israelis, the Hebrew people, the Jews, and um, decided that he would use himself to the Edomites to the extent that Esau became Edom. And so he went from being the person who would have been the successor to Isaac and um, the, the erator of the Jewish nation to the founder of the Edomites. And, uh, Amalek was the name of his grandson that uh, he progenited uh, after he became Edom. So this is one of those uh, Esau to chose to corrupt himself relative to monotheism and this is now uh, Amalek is the second generation of corruption, of pagan corruption, and, consequ and consequently, uh, everyone in Amalek's tribe that was born became Amalekites. Uh, Jacob is uh, traveling with uh, his two wives and all of his children and all of his many flocks and herds and everything, and uh, finds out that Esau is coming toward him and is coming toward him with like 400 armed men. And uh, uh, Jacob was really something of a cow. So he basically puts all of his flocks and herds in front of him and a giant chunk of the flocks and herds, which he's uh, going to offer as a bribe to Esau to not kill him and not kill his family and, uh, and all of his tribe and, um, and all of his tribes. He was, uh, he was the father of all 12 tribes of Israel. And uh, then put Leah and her children, who was one of his wives, but not his favorite wife, in the next rank. And then uh, Rachel, his favorite wife, and Joseph and Benjamin, uh, her 
leading from behind. Well, that, uh, Jacob, Jacob set, set, the, set the tone for that. Anyway, he's deathly afraid that Esau is coming to kill him and basically uh, goes towards Esau, driving this giant herd of, uh, of cattle and sheep and whatnot ahead of him and bowing himself to the ground as he's walking towards Esau, which is, uh, you don't want to be doing that. If you're a monotheist, you don't want to be bowing to a pagan, and your brother has chosen to be a pagan. Uh, very much to his surprise, uh, Esau just sort of says, uh, what's this? What's with all these cattle and sheep and everything that, that I passed on the way, way over here? And uh, Jacob says, uh, to find grace in the sight of uh, uh, my Lord Esau. Again, you know, calling him Lord is, is not a particularly good idea. And it's like Esau sort of goes, uh, it's okay, my brother, I have enough. You know, what, what, what's yours? You keep yours. I got mine. I'm keeping mine. It's like still not a lot of love lost between these people. Like, you, you supplanted me uh, in monotheism, uh, I don't. I don't want to bribe from you. I'm not. I'm not going to kill you. But uh, uh, really, let's 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 just leave. Let's leave bad enough alone. And uh, Jacob is so relieved. Now, okay, this is idiosyncratic Dave's uh, interpretation of it. Um, is, is so relieved that Esau isn't isn't going to kill him that uh, he, he insists, no, please, you know, take this. And it's like Esau goes, well, you know, whatever. Okay, I got probably as many flocks and herds as you do, but uh, thanks. Okay, I got, uh, now I got some more. And then uh, when, when they're traveling, then they're traveling for a ways together. And then Esau says, uh, actually, why don't I take some of my people and give them to you? Uh, give you some of these Edomites. And Jacob goes along with that. And it's like, okay, again, bad choice. Uh, there's two different, uh, that's two different things, accepting uh, cattle and sheep and oxen um, as a bribe or, uh, or, or relief or gift of some kind uh, from your estranged brother. But um, taking uh, pagans from a pagan tribe and grafting them into your monotheistic uh, context, uh, bad choice, uh, very bad choice. Uh, and as a matter of fact, if you look at the immediately subsequent chapters to that, that enacts itself in very, very bad ways. Uh, Dinah, uh, Jacob's daughter, ends up, uh, she's just you know, going to, to look around uh, the new land that they live in and get uh, kidnapped by Shechem and raped by Shechem. And Shechem says um, to Jacob, uh, I really like your daughter, so I want to marry her. And it's like, uh, you just kidnapped her and raped her. And it's like, well, yes, that's an implication of you allowing Esau to plant Edomite in uh in your monotheistic context. Uh, that's a bad choice. That's, that's why that happened. So, okay, that's kind of a digression. The other thing that, that Jacob did uh, was exactly what Tony's asking about. Um, why, if their memory is to be blotted out, are they being written about in Israel's sacred history? Uh, that was one of the things that Jacob did that was again to me really really stupid but I can understand why he did it. He was so relieved that Esau wasn't going to kill him that uh, he went okay we've got all of these genealogy of so and so begat so and so and so and so begat so and so and so and so begat so and so all the way back to Adam uh, in the Garden of Eden uh, as my way of going, isn't this great that Esau isn't going to kill me? Let's incorporate uh, the Edomite genealogy, uh, starting with Esau, and uh, you scribe, you sit down with uh, with the Edomites and get their genealogy, and we'll include it in the Torah. And it's like. 
iTunes on my uh, uh, on my laptop, and I have those playing continuously uh, while I'm asleep or while I'm doing things that I don't have to completely focus on when I'm when I'm back in the residence part of the of the off white house. And uh, coincidentally, uh, Genesis 36 with the Edomite uh, genealogy is uh, one of one of the only ones that I recognize while it's playing as oh, it's Genesis 36. Most of the time, it's just I'm just listening to Hebrew scripture, and unless they're using a, a, a formal name that I know is in a specific chapter, I don't know what chapter it is. So this is, uh, the reason that I know it is because everybody was called a duke in, in the genealogy, or, or a bunch of them were called dukes, Duke Temon, Duke Temo, Duke uh, Zepho, Duke so-and-so, Duke, and it's like, that's the KGV, that's uh, Englishmen in 1611 going, okay, what's, what is this Jewish term, or what is this, I think it's probably an Edomite term, of um, an honorific for um, the people that are being cited. Uh, what's an equivalent of that? Well, in England, it'd be a duke. So that's what we'll call them, dukes. Uh, the Hebrew word is aloof. So here's, here's um, Genesis 36, uh, just a few seconds of it, with the aloofs. Uh, in sequence. Let me just get it, get it queued up here. Where are we?
Right. You're struck speechless. Well, no, actually, I'm making a note about that. Okay, at 126, the soda, you know, I'm going to make a note when I... When I'm splitting the videos up of, hey, if you're really into the strange death of Alex Raymond, here's <laughs> here's a teaser for volume three. <laughs> it would certainly make the strangest Jeopardy question that you could possibly have, or a Jeopardy answer that you could possibly.